There will come a time when black people wake up and become intellectually independent enough to think for themselves as other humans are intellectually independent enough to think for themselves then the black man will feel for other black people and this new thinking and feeling will cause black people to stick together and then at that point you'll have a situation where when you attack one black man you are attacking all black men and this type of black thinking will cause all black people to stick together and this type of thinking also will bring an end to the brutality inflicted upon black people or the party ain't over because i know it's hard for us to even visualize this mm. we have never seen a movie a comic where we've done great things we gotta visualize it we gotta show it because it's written in the bible isaiah 40 and 31 watch this but they that wait upon the lord that here is the patience and faith of the saints they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles and we shall mount to what you think that mean have you ever seen a man fly Come on. Come on, y'all. Yeah. ship really should be uh, sculpted by them, those who uh, create the leader. I don't think that the leader should ride into town like Clint Eastwood and rescue and solve the problem. I think the people have to organize and create a leader. That's what happened in Montgomery. Poor people got together and anointed the leadership. And there was a big quarrel about that, and finally Dr. King was. But that's the healthy way. Yes. Too many people think that leadership is somebody who announces that they're going to run and lead, and they get appointed to some job. But that is not really healthy leadership. I think, especially for an oppressed people, I think that we should nominate and anoint our leaders. And what is the responsibility of a leader? Pause it. Brothers, in terms of leadership, when, once the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the people will come. Remember, it was just right on, on the set, it was just me and Kanai first, just us. Then came uh, the deacons, Deacon Asaph, Laba, Malachi, Abiel, Yahshua. Then they came. Then you came. That's how healthy leadership is. The Holy Spirit comes on you, and give me that, uh, Captain Gedaliah, in Isaiah 63 and 10, I think it is, about Moses. We didn't stand up and say, hey, where the leaders? Nope. We taught the gospel, and the spirits came. The spirit said, I'm going to follow this man. I'm going to follow them. Read that, Ged Gedaliah? Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. Is that the right scripture I want? Uh, yes, about the Holy Spirit? Yes. Um, yes. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within them? Y'all see that? Moses had the Holy Spirit. Israel followed behind Moses. Why? He had the Holy Spirit. God took that Holy Spirit off Moses and then put it on the 70 elders. And the people followed those 70 elders. Y'all understand that? That's how it worked. So, you can't connive yourself to being a good leader. You can't manipulate people to becoming a good leader. This is why some men are more honored than others. This is why I was talking about the captains. Some get more honored than others. Because the people recognize the Holy Spirit's more on this man right here than that man. The people see it. Go back and re rewind just a few seconds. Go ahead. For somebody who announces that they're going to run and lead and they get appointed to some job. But that is not really healthy leadership. I think, especially for an oppressed people, I think that we should nominate and anoint our leaders. And what is the responsibility of a leader? 
to be faithful to the people who, who gave them the assignment of leadership. Pause, pause it. Uh, to be faithful to the people that assign them to that position. This is why we don't steal your money. This is why we're not buying Bugattis and Bentleys. This is why when brothers and sisters donate, we say what we're going to do. Everybody understand that? This ain't about us becoming fat cats. Is that the terminology? Back in the day, fat cats. Getting paid, y'all understand that. This ain't about that. This is about getting God's work done. And we are sincere in it, okay? Play on. It's very difficult because you have to be able to withstand a lot of temptations. Pause, pause, pause. You got to be able to withstand a lot of temptation. How many of you men raise your hand over a congregation? Raise your hand. You men that are over a congregation, believe it or not, women draw to you for the wrong reasons. Some single, some even married, draw to you for the wrong reasons. There's a lot of temptation, not just sexual temptations. There's financial temptations. Roll it back and play again. To be faithful to the people who, who gave them the assignment of leadership. I think that um, it's very difficult because you have to be able to withstand a lot of temptations. And um, all of us are mortal, and whatever our gender, the, uh, the seduction, the temptation out here is awesome. And you have to be mindful of that going into the position. Pause it. This is why I tell you men, when you're counseling, there's several things you can do. When you counsel with people, never let it just be you alone counseling. Have brothers with you who have sense in the scriptures, have a camera in the room, or have it public where everybody is around. Like in Atlanta, they have public uh, councils. In New York, they have a room, but there's cameras everywhere. So nobody can accuse you, he touched me. He said A, B, or C to me. It was inappropriate. Don't have phone conversations with women. Let your wife handle that. Let the senior sisters in the congregation. I hope you're writing this down. I don't want to hear. I didn't know. I was confused. Let the senior sisters deal with these women. People be asking me, how come I don't... Uh, answer these Instagram, I don't do, I, because I know it, a lot of them, it's a trap. It's a trap for foolishness, for seduction. I get a couple of, one, this while ago, a couple of months ago, I decided, sister, go, hey, Shalom, Bishop, every week she's Shalom, Shalom, how you doing, how you doing? So I said, all right, Shalom, sis, most high in Christ, bless. Hey, Shalom, Bishop. She starts telling me her life story. All right, sister, I'll pray for you. Next week, she sends me a video of two dogs having sex. I said, delete. I said, this is Satan. I said, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It always goes down the path to wicked rottenness, ratchet women. And it's all, I'm te we're telling you what we speak from experience. Here goes another brother. I said, hey. Stop talking to all these women in the congregation, all the women. Hey, Shalom. Uh, I don't want to say who it is, so I'll just say Officer Bob, Brother Judah. Brother Judah, Brother Judah. I said, hey, Brother Judah, you know all those women? Brother Judah says, how come you don't know all these women, Bishop? I said, I don't want to know all these women. Maybe three of them I know because those women are putting in work. All them other group of women, they're a gaggle of geese, and they ain't about nothing. They trifling. Did Brother Judah knew all the names of the sisters. I said, Brother Judah, I'm warning you, stop talking to all these women. It's going to bite you one day. 
One month go by, two months go by, three months go by. Here comes the fourth month. One of the sisters stands up because she didn't get her way. She says, Brother Judah's trying to F all the sisters in the congregation. She said in front of everybody, you could hear a pin drop. And the whole congregation looks at Brother Judah. <laughs> I said, Brother Judah, I done told you, you don't listen. Stay out of the faces of these women, okay? 